Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Yeshiva YouTube. Ion Ben Sion. We're doing today Ksuvo stuff, Nun Gimel 53. Um, the Gemara talks about here the second halacha in the Mishnah, in the previous Mishnah, which says that after a husband were to die, right, so he lives in a state. So, right, a wife doesn't inherit her husband, right? She is an almana, she gets fed from the Yorshim, right? That the father's heirs, his sons, right, inherit his property. They have to feed his widow. And they also have to feed their sisters, right? That's part of the Tanaik Suba. Now, the, the, the fundamental question is, we've actually we've had discussion of this before. The Gemara Mabasra says that if there's a lot of the chasim, if, if he leaves a big inheritance, the father, so the bonim get inherit everything and they feed the, the girls. And if there's a meager uh, inheritance, the girls get the, what they need. And the boys have the Yishul al-Psachim. They have to go collect door-to-door -door for their basic needs. So what? why do you need a Tanai Ksuba for this? It seems to be a Dindal Raisa from Sakhon al -Basra. So I like to make a, dist a distinction, like I said, on Daf Memzai, and we talked about the Chi of Mazonos, <coughs> that a husband has to his his, his wife, right? There's a Mazonos del Raisa, there's a Mazonos del Rabban. Mazonos del Raisa is the basic needs. And that, Baba Basra was also talking about that. The father's estate, um, it includes not just inheritance for the sons, but also he, Mustam, he, he probably wants to guarantee that his daughters should have nourishment, the basic needs that they need. And the basic necessities in life, that is guaranteed to them, Mido Raisa, um, especially if there's a, a small inheritance. They, they're the first ones to get it. They get it in front of, in front of the bunim. In front of the bunim, the inheritance goes to the daughters, not to the sons, um, because they need to be fed for their basic necessity. That's part of Yerusha. That's from Sechus Baba Bas. We're not going to talk about that now. Here we're talking about a Tanai, a tanai Ksuba, one of the Tanai Ksuba, which is basically the Rabbanan made certain enactments that were part of the Ksuba, even if they're not written in the Ksuba. Not all these things are written in the Ksuba, but they're not written in the common Ksuba, but they are halachas in the Ksuba that when the husband dies, the sons have to feed the daughters until when. So this is the Gemara talks about. The Gemara ends up saying it's Malachas Ravin Levi, it's Malachas Tanoim, right? But Erison, everyone agrees if there's Nisuin, she gets married to a man. So the man takes over the chiv mazon. He has a chiv mazon to his wife. So there's no longer a need to feed to feed the girl. If she's a bogaris, right? She's an old girl. She's able to work for herself, take care of herself. There's no chiv on the brothers to feed her, sustain her anymore. Machlok is if there's erison. If there's erison, that's the gemara. The gemara says if there's just erison. So Rav holds, right? Erison is she's already added the rishus to the father. And Levi says no until nisuin or bagros. Uh, Levi is more mekel. Um, the Psak halacha is that she only gets until Erison. She only gets until Erison. Now, what is this Machlogis based on? How do you explain the Machlogis Rav and Levi? So I like to explain the Machlogis as follows. That, yes, in Bob Bas, we're talking about the basic needs of the daughter. That's just guaranteed to get me the rice. I mean, there are born in their Masakin that the daughter should get treated with luxuries that she's accustomed to. Uh, just like a wife gets extra things, sipuke, sipukaiche, she gets extra things, that's an azonus der to make sure she gets an entitled life, a good life, not just the bare minimum, she gets a good life, that's der abonan or masakum der to ensure she's not like an ama ivriya, she gets a great life. So too, they ensure that daughters also get a great life. However, once there's erisin, so the Gemara's maskana is that normally, um, the Rav Maskana is that normally the normal way it happens that once a person gets engaged to a woman, this is for sure how it happens today, we don't assume he's unsure she's going to get cold feet. We assume they're not going to break the engagement and she's going to go and she's going to, they're going to get married. And he doesn't want his Arusa to be, not have food. So he's going to provide not just her basic necessities, but he's going to provide also a great living for her, right? He's going to provide for her to go out with her friends and have a great time sipping ice coffees. Yeah, she's you know he's gonna to want to give it. That's maskana. That's gimel in the uh, ain mishpat here. He's gonna give it to her. Now he's not chayev to give it to her for sure. Now he's not chayev mazonas until after the nisuin, but he is chayev. But it's a, it's a it's a likelihood he's gonna give it to her. So based on that likelihood, we say that that erison it stops already. So right, if you told me that it's guaranteed to her at erison, I can say fine until erison. That makes sense. We possibly like Rav. After Aries, she's guaranteed from the husband. You don't need for the father. But the the Gemara is not saying she gets, she doesn't get it halakhically. She we assume she's gonna get it. 
But that's enough to say that it already stops at Erison. Why would it stop already at Erison? So, what's the reason that when there's Nisuin or ba- when there's Bakris, right? When she's Bogaris, she also doesn't get the extra things. The reason is she's old, old enough to work herself. So, the way I understand it is that the reason that it's part of a Tanai Ksuba is that when a person gets married, he wants to ensure that his daughters will be taken care of, his daughters will be taken care of. That's based on not um, technical, it's not a technicality when they're in Roshos, like, meaning the Midal Raisa, a daughter is owned by the father, right, in a certain sense. I don't, we'll have to discuss more in the Second how he owns her, but he has the right to Mekadesh, he has the right, even as a Nara, and I take our Maisi Adas, take our Maisi Adas, it was a Mishnah Memvav already, we saw the father has the right to do that. As a Tana Nara, he sort of owns his daughter, so you would expect to say, okay, he owns his daughter, so therefore, payback, she gets fed by him and all the great stuff that a father would give to his daughter. Um, in fact, we saw there Masaki until she's 12, they should, he should give her food, should give her Mizonos. Um, once she's a Bulgaris, once she leaves his Roshos, right, he can't be Makadish anymore, he can't get her Maisi Adayim, um, so therefore she's not entitled anymore, he doesn't have to pay her back by giving her Mizonos. Um, so it's just a technicality because she leaves his Roshos, or Nisu, and she goes in the Roshos with her husband. But we see that's not the whole case. The case is Aresin. Aresin, she's still sort of in the Roshos of the father, right? He can still be made for in the dorm. He's made for in the dorm together with the husband. So she's still in the Roshos of the father, and technically. And still, the Mizono stop at Aresin. So, like the first din of Din Dichren and the other din, these are based on um, the expectations that a father has for his daughter. Is It's not a technicality that she leaves his Roshos at Aresin. Aresin, you don't for the father leave the Roshos of the father. It's the fact that um, once a father, his daughter gets engaged, he no longer feels compelled to give her um, what she needs. Um, it's based on the Umden Das. It's based on, we could uh, estimate what uh, the father would want to give. And that's really what Tanakh Suva is. It's extra stuff that's not guaranteed. And the father would probably assume the husband is going to give it. Like the Gemara Maskana is going to give it. So therefore, we can assume the father wouldn't want to give it past Erison, which is how we possibly like Rav. Levi obviously wouldn't subscribe to that. Maybe we subscribe to actually it's a deal until she actually leaves the Roshos. And Rav says, no, it's just based on the Umden Das of the father. The father doesn't want to give it. He assumes she'll get it after Erison. She doesn't give her more. Of course, he has to provide her a basic nourishment from his estate, but the extra stuff he doesn't have to provide for that's what I like to say about the Sugi. I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.